Hey guys, this is David from Benchmark, and today we're gonna to be doing Grid versus Ground 101, the absolute basics for surveyors. We're gonna be talking about this because grid distances and ground distances, grid coordinates and ground coordinates, can be very, very different, and if you don't know which one you're working in, you could do your whole job, and you could be out by a, more than a foot. In this video, we're gonna be talking about three things. We're gonna be talking about what is grid and what are ground coordinates. We're gonna be talking about what the difference between them is, and we're gonna be talking about why it's important to know which one you're in. So a grid position, or a grid coordinate is your coordinate on a map projection and what a map projection is is if this is my earth this little ball we have and we take a paper around it and we wrap this around the earth and we were to project we put a you know a little light inside the ball and it projects out onto this paper we unfold it and here's our map this would be, your position on here would be your grid position. It's just a projection of your latitude and longitude from the GPS onto whatever mapping plane you are using. Whether that's UTM, whether that's state plane, that's your grid position. The second type of coordinate you can have is a ground coordinate. And ground coordinates are the type of coordinates that people in the real world like to use. And that's because when you have a one meter difference in a ground coordinate, that's one meter where you'd measure it on your tape. If you have a 10 meter, 10 foot difference on your ground coordinate, that's 10 feet or 10 meters as you'd measure it on your tape. There's no distortion the same way you have with grid coordinates. And now you can see why the two distances will be different on this drawing. If I have the grid, which is this green line, it's just a flat mapping plane and it's going through the surface of the earth. Well, if I'm measuring the distance between these two points, if I have to flatten this, if I have to fit all this ground onto the grid, I have to distort that quite a bit. So to get a ground coordinate, you're gonna take your grid coordinate and you're gonna multiply it by the inverse of the combined scale factor. Now, you've probably seen combined scale factors before. They usually look like 0 0.999 something, and they look like they wouldn't really affect your coordinate all that much. But if you take this coordinate that I have, for example, that's definitely not just the default coordinate that Noah's NCAT pulls up when you open it. It's just a spot in Missouri. Now this coordinate, has a scale factor of 0 0.9996232. So if I was going to do a one kilometer job with this scale factor, I would already be seeing a difference between my grid distance and my ground distance of more than a foot. So that's why when you're out surveying, you're out laying out these jobs, that's why you really have to know which coordinate system it's been designed in, whether the engineers have handed you a drawing in grid or ground coordinates, because if it's wrong, even a job as, as small as a kilometer long can already give you a bust of more than a foot. Now, the reason you might want a grid position as opposed to a, a position on a globe, as lots of people might think when you're doing survey, is even if you want to do something as simple as inversing and finding the difference between two points. Doing that with, with simple mapping plane X, Y, Z, coordinates is so much simpler than trying to find the distance between two points using spherical trig. That's a nightmare. All right, so that's grid coordinates, ground coordinates, what makes them different and why you should probably consider this when you're out in the field. But you don't need to be intimidated. All of this is super easy to deal with, and super easy to work with in our Field Genius software. If you wanna check out how easy it is to set up a single point scale factor and work off of that in Field Genius, I'll put a link here to our Survey Assistant website. You can check it out for tutorials, guides, workflows, everything like that.